Howdy folks, thanks for stopping in at Dad's Toolbox. In tonight's video, we're gonna to be talking about racks. I mean racking, stick around. All right guys, thanks for sticking around. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're brewing beer or wine or mead, uh, when you get to the end of the primary fermentation, and you know, when everything's calmed down, it's not pushing uh, air through the bubbler as much anymore, you're going to want to move your, your liquids, you know, your beer, your wine, or your mead, out of the primary fermentation vessel and into another vessel. Uh, you want to do that to get it off of what they call the lees, which is, you know, all the dead yeast and any adjuncts you've put in there that have settled to the bottom, any uh, fining agents, anything like that. All of that stuff that settles at the bottom, you want to leave that in the container and take your, your product and put it into a, a clean vessel so that it can either continue fermenting or it can start to age and also settle out any remaining solids that, that are still suspended in the solution. Now depending on what you've made, um, each of your racking experiences is going to be a little bit different. For example, you've got this traditional I made here. You can see it's it's pretty clear. There's a real fine layer of leaves down on the bottom. That's because this has already been racked twice, I think. Um, so it is really at the end. This one may get bottled soon um, if I don't decide to do something else with it. This one over here, this one, you don't know what's on the bottom of this. You can't see it because the, the need is very opaque so you have no idea what's at the bottom of this um, now this was a berry blend that i put in there i'm pretty sure i got all the berry solids out of there the only thing it should it should look like this on the bottom because it's also been racked twice but i have no way of knowing until i rack it and then you've got guys like this look at this bad boy i'm gonna lose easily a third of the product here. This is all. This is a mango mead, and uh, all the pulp has settled down here at the bottom. So when I go to rack this, I'm going to try and get all of this fluid that I can off of the top, and I'm going to have to leave that pulp in there uh, with with whatever fluids, unfortunately, are still in that pulp. All right. So when you're first starting out, you really don't need any special equipment at all. Uh, if you have access to some kind of like uh, medical tubing or, or something like that, that's great. Worst case, go down to Home Depot, go to the plumbing section where they sell the water line for, you know, refrigerators, stuff like that. The, the tubing that you use to hook water to your refrigerator for your ice maker or if there's a cold water dispenser on there. And then, you know, what's this? This is, uh, I don't know, probably about a five foot section here. Um, it's very simple. You stick one end in your source vessel and you suck on the tube until it's full and then you stick the other end in your destination vessel and you let gravity do its thing. Um, and that, that, that'll work for, for quite a while. In fact, um, I would say probably the first six months that was what I did. And then uh, as you decide that you want to stick around and, and brew more, you'll end up at some point buying one of these. Now this is called an auto siphon. This basically does the job of the sucking for you. You put your, your tube to the racking cane here and then you stick this in your source vessel and basically this is a pump and you pump it until the fluid starts flowing and then you're done. All you're doing at that point is you're adjusting the level of your, your auto siphon. Now this thing this thing's really big because I bought the larger one in order to do three and five gallon vessels along with these one gallon vessels. It'll do these one gallon vessels just fine. Uh, you can actually get a shorter one that's about that, that long for these one gallon vessels if that's all you want to do is the one gallon badges. Now I'm going to show you both ways of doing this. Okay, so there's our source vessel. We have our tubing here. I'm going to pull our little cork off. Actually, before we do this, we're going to take our tape that I used to mark the, uh, the batches, identify them, and put it on the new vessel. That way you don't forget. 
Give me a paper towel. Okay, so I'm gonna take this cork, put it on the paper towel there. You can see, you just stick your, your hose down in there. I like to run it up against the side of the, the glass there so I can see where I'm drawing fluid from. And then you're gonna suck. There it goes. Now you wanna stick this all the way down to the bottom. That keeps it from splashing and collecting oxygen. I've laid the towel there because almost inevitably you spill at some point. Whether you're using the racking cane or the auto siphon or just the tubing. Now you can see that this goes pretty quickly. Um, it goes even faster if you get more separation between the two. So if I were to take this jug like I normally do and set it on the floor, uh, it will go actually a lot faster than it's going right now. And this is really the only thing that you have to make sure happens is that the destination vessel is lower in elevation than the uh, source vessel. Now as we get towards the bottom here, I like to tip the fluid, I like to tip towards the uh, where I have the, the end of the, you can see the end of the tube there. And what this does is it puts more fluid on this side of the, the jug. And if you, if you do it without wiggling too much, you'll leave all that sediment on the bottom undisturbed. And if it wobbles too much, then you're gonna stir that stuff up. sediment in this one. All right, that's what I'm going to take out of that. Okay, so you can see that this one this one really didn't have much, much sediment in it at all. And we'll call that one done deal. All right, so now we've got a new source vessel and we've got our next contender, our next customer. And I think, I think my paper towel blew away. <laughs> All right. Okay, so cork. We're gonna remember this guy over here, just like that. That way we don't forget which batch is which. So now I've got uh, my auto siphon and then my hose. Let me get it un unraveled here. Okay. So the good news about this one there's usually less spillage because you can take it and run it into your bottle before you ever even touch your mead. And then when you go to hook this on there, I really you just push it in there. Now if it's too tight, what really helps is if you run this under hot water and that'll loosen that up. But this tube's been used several times. Okay, so we're gonna stick this right in the bottle. I'm only going to go down a couple inches because I don't know where my sediment layer is and then I'm just going to pump it and you can see there it goes. Oh, that sure is pretty, isn't it? I can't quite tell where my... Uh, I can see... When, when you start to see the... Uh, I don't know if you can see that the end of the uh, racking cane and you know you're getting close to exposing. See here, if you pick this up out of there, it breaks the siphon. So you don't want to do that. Unless you need to stop for some reason. And we'll just start that up again. So in this case, I'm going to be trying to keep that racking cane there as close to the surface as possible. 
without without exposing the end to the air and breaking the cipher. One of the things you can do is watch your tube to see if you're picking up sediment. If it looks clear like it does here, you don't see any solids going through there, and you, that means you're doing a pretty good job. Uh, as soon as you start seeing solids, it's best just to pick the racking cane straight up out of the, out of the fluid there in order to break the siphon. It looked pretty good. This one's probably ready to bottle as well. Yeah, you can see that sediment layer is very, very fine. I've got, I'm touching the bottom of the bottle now because I want to get everything I can out of there. Go. Now, you just slowly pick up this hose to get the rest of that mead into the bottle. Pull this up real slow. And now, what I'm going to do is just stick it in this bottle here so it doesn't drip anywhere. And then I can take all that stuff over for washing. I'm going to put my cork on. A bung. Ta da! And that is racking. Alright, guys, so you can see there's really nothing super difficult about it. Um, there's just a few things to remember. Uh, number one, make sure that your equipment is clean and sanitized. That way you're not contaminating your batch with uh, creepy crawlies that are going to give you nasty flavors. Uh, number two, always make sure that your destination vessel is lower in elevation than your source vessel. That way gravity does the work for you. And then maybe the biggest thing to remember is when you rack your mead, there is a chance that fermentation will start up again. Okay, So um, you want to be careful of racking and then immediately bottling your mead because you may kick off the fermentation again in which case, as soon as you bottle it and you stick it in a, in a container um, that's airtight, it's not going to let the gases out, you get what they call bottle bombs. And those are the ones that uh, blow up at 3 o'clock in the morning while you're trying to sleep and you got mead and glass everywhere. So be wary of that. And once you rack, let it chill for a little while, see if it's off-gassing anything. And then if not, then go ahead, uh, bottle your mead. Yeah, so that's about all I can think of that's important. Uh, everything else you're gonna kinda learn as you go and you're gonna develop your own technique. But if I remember anything important, I'll go ahead and I'll put it down in the description down below. And if you're an experienced uh, brewer, you know, mead maker, wine maker, whatever you wanna call yourself, and you have a suggestion or two that's gonna help folks along, go ahead and throw that down in the comments. That way uh, we are putting tools in people's toolboxes and not causing them problems by giving them uh, bad information. So with that said, thanks for stopping in folks.